right, so we're live. I'm here with uh, Muhammad, and um, we both, uh, and this, I'm Del from Tier 1 Comics, we both have an interest in Persian history. Muhammad is Persian, full Persian, and um, we, uh, I really like the material that you have on your, your Instagram page. It has a lot of Achaemenid era uh, history and graphics, and I'm kind of doing something similar. Mine is more on the, the fictional side. Um, I take a few liberties here and there. But yeah, we just wanted to record this chat. Um, there's two guys that are that really love um, uh, ancient Persian history and, and would, would think I think a lot of people would benefit from just listening to this conversation. Totally. I, I absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah. Well, the background of this is, yeah, I, I, I contacted you a few few nights ago, I think, yeah. Del, and I'm amazed at how uh, late you were up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, I've been, I've been following your work at the tier one, uh, comics. And, and I think I came across your work a, a few months ago, uh, working on, uh, Immor immortal, uh, Saudi. And I, and I thought a couple of things here. So, uh, one that you're reviving, uh, I, I saw in one of your, um, chats with some, some other friends, you mentioned that, uh, the, uh, Persian military history is a treasure trove. I think, yeah. I think that's that's certainly true, and that's not really uh, worked on a lot. So I think that for one, that's that's really smart. Uh, second, uh, to tap uh, somebody who already is is pretty popular on the social media, both in Iran and here, and oh. to say, hey, I want to make you a hero in this character. I thought that was genius. I thought that was a really good marketing uh, work, and 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 so. Um, I was like, I got, I got to talk to this guy. I saw some, some of the work, you know, and, and I was really interested. I was following uh, closely until I saw one of your videos and you were, you were talking about how there's not a lot of work done in this area and there's a lot of demand, which, which we're, I'm going to get into what telling my story of like, um, and I thought, you know, like, yeah, we, we need to talk. So, uh, where it, where it really starts and stop me anytime. Like I, you know, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, I don't want a, this to feel like a monologue, but absolutely hear this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Del, this a while ago, so I've, I've been in the U S for about, I, I think 11 or, or 12 years now. And, and, uh, you know, the, the moment I entered the U S, um, I realized that the identity that I knew as an Iranian um, is is immediately different. It's it's shattered. It's I got to construct a new one because uh, nobody nobody knows. Um, you know, there's so much stereotypes and things like that, which I'm, I'm not gonna. This is not about the, the this talk, but like yeah. basically, it's uh, the the image of being Iranian is so different here than what it is back home that we think of ourselves and our history and our um, identity. So so I I knew that something needs to change. Like I need to construct a new one from this shattered one. So like, I, I, I was pretty much very interested in, uh, understanding, re understanding myself, our, our history and things like that. I, I learned about history more, uh, the first few years that I was here than I had ever in Iran, even though taking Iranian history in school, right. Yeah. Uh, sort of goes back to what, what we were mentioning before we started recording of, of, um, Del, you were mentioning how, uh, you realized that a lot of history where it was um, that you knew or you had seen or you could ha had come across was was uh, third hand. Somebody had read something and somebody made a poster, but yeah, going to the source and reading it uh, to your point is is really important. So uh, I did that for a while and and uh, obviously became very interested in what does it mean to be an Iranian outside of the context of Iran and um, that kind of uh, sat for a while. I, I was learning um, you know how to how to live in this new society with with so many differences and so many uh, similarities too but um but then something happened that was crazy um around 2015 for me specifically um <clears throat> i came across a study that was done um worldwide uh, i think it was pew research center don't quote me on it i I'll, i can send you a link of this study later but uh the study showed that you know they they looked at um, how popular uh, countries were in the eyes of, you know, people worldwide, mm -hmm. and they ranked them. So, uh, you know, the the like there were fifty one countries I think they studied in, uh, and over twenty one thousand people. So, like, sort of like a global picture of, um, you know, how what are the standings of these countries in terms of popularity. Uh, um, 
you know, the first then, needless to say, a couple of European countries. Germany was first, actually, last year, that year. I think it was like the year right after 2015. It was like year right after the World Cup and they had won. I think okay. that's what was happening. It was like Germany was like at the height and uh, Switzerland was second and, and a very popular country, a very peaceful country. And, and a bunch of, you know, um, Northern European countries, um, the usual suspects and, and uh, you know, um, South Korea and Japan made it in, in there too. So, so that, that's the context for the positive ones. And I, and the, the list uh, went on to actually point out uh, 10 most unpopular and hated countries. And, and to my uh, surprise, Iran was last, uh, meaning Iran was the most hated. And, and that was shocking for a couple of reasons. I knew that, you know, from, from the experience that I told you the moment I entered the U S I knew that this is, you know, we're not being seen as positively and, and Iranians know that inside Iran themselves, but, but to a uh, couple of things to one, be the last, like the dead last was like, wow. Um, that was one. And the second one, was, this was not only, this study was not only uh, conducted in the West, it was worldwide. So, you know, in India, in, in China, like ev like everywhere, in, in uh, African countries, like it was not only the West that we were being seen negatively. So <clears throat> that kind of uh, triggered a, um, I don't know, like a long um, curiosity for me that first, why is it so negative? And, and second, we, we know um, uh, being from Iran, that there's there's a lot of problems, obviously, but but there's there's beauties too, like beauties in a, in, a, in the history pre-Islamic, post-Islamic. There's there's so much that that we haven't been able to say, or we haven't been able to tell our own story. As as you can see, like a lot of Hollywood portrayals of people from that region uh, that are commonly negative, and and so how can we? you know, uh, bring a positive twist to that because we have, we have the resource, uh, resources and the talent, not necessarily in terms of money, which I'm going to come to. <clears throat> so that curiosity spun me into how can we change that? And, and, you know, soon you realize this is such a massive thing. This is a thing like it's a, it's an industry. It's like a soft, um, soft power. You export your culture. Countries like South Korea, they put 1% or 1% uh, of their government budget is spent since the 90s on exporting culture. And now, you know, K-pop has blew up. And, you know, yeah. these are all calculated as immense amount of money's, money go into this. Um, a lot of countries, a lot of good examples like Japan, like, Ger you know, going back to that study, if you remember, I said Germany was first. Yeah, Germany was the hate most hated country in the world. Like, arguably like during, in, in during yeah the the you know mid-century uh and during the um 1950s 1940s 1930s so how did that change like what what work has been done and these are these are not accidental these are uh work that countries do with big budget so i was like okay so is a big budget and and um whether our countries in the middle east could could help that or or not that's that's not something that we could change, but you know, an individual is is not big enough to kind of bring a change toward this. So it is it's kind of like a little bit of a um I was a little discouraged. Um and then yeah. uh, I worked for a um for a, a ad company, advertise like a large advertisement company uh, for a while and worked on Gatorade and uh, worked on Ford uh, and Google for a while. And, and working for those companies, I realized, oh, there are techniques. You know, if, if you see countries and nations as a brand, which it, it really is, yeah, they, are. Um, they really are. Yeah. Um, is one of the best at that. We know how to brand ourselves here. Ex oh, absolutely. Yes. The U.S. is, is really good at that. Absolutely. hundred percent. And, and when you, when you brand, like when South Korea brands its country and culture, they sell more Kias, they sell more Hyundais, you know, they, it, it's, it works like it, they sell more, um, Korean food culture to the West and, and, uh, K-pop basically and, and their, uh, movies. So, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a thing that us is really good at. And, and we know So I, I learned some of those techniques of how do you, uh, improve, um, the perception of a brand, um, and I was, then it, it occurred to me like, okay, um, can we, can we apply that to, to, you know, for example, Iranian cultures who's uh, so, so, um, hated. And, and the funny thing is like people who come here, uh, a bunch of people are born here that are Iranian. They, they usually say they're Persian and that's, that's part of the reason it's, it's because 
we don't want to be associated with that brand of Iran because it's it's so negative. So we have we have found a cop out of of saying that we are Persian, which is which I think is a cool thing. But but also uh, yeah. the heavy work needs to be done. Uh, we can't just like hide behind that. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm. This is not like. Um, this is not like a manifest or this is not like a hard rule for me. I just think yeah. that it's interesting that we have, we have learned to uh, cope with that of, uh, you know, different ways. One is calling ourselves Persians it's a, instead of Iranian because there's a better image associated with that, uh, which is also deteriorating actually, unfortunately, but, uh, but yeah, there we have, we have found ways and, and um, basically long story short, I realized that if, if there's, if, if this is a problem for specifically the diaspora community, I don't want to change an image of a country. Like I'm not in a position to do that. Uh, I don't have the connections. We don't have the money. It's not a work of an organization. Even if we had, it's not a work of an organization, a work of a country, a region, like entirely. So, uh, but then I realized that if, if we see the problem as there's a lot of people, Iranians, um, uh, or Persian speakers, the diaspora community here in the, here in the U S and Canada, and they they face these problems of how to explain themselves. So if if we can, uh, f you know, kind of help them tell their own story or like make products for them to tell their own story, like for example, the work that you have done, mm -hmm. you know, like you know, it's 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 these little things. I think these tools that you know help them uh, know their own story better, a little story better, uh, um, know, know their own story a little better, better, better. And, and also, um, uh, can, can envision something that they could then share with others, you know, especially if it's an English language. So, uh, you know, share with their neighbor, share with their kids. A lot of people have kids here that grow up and they're, they're Persian, uh, ethnically, but, but, you know, they grew up and they don't know anything about their parents, uh, heritage. So, um, I think a lot of work could be done and I think the market is there and the, here's what the interesting thing is. I think uh, this could, instead of being, you know, not for profit with billions of dollars having to like uh, yeah. pay to do pre like advertisement work, PR work, basically. Uh, if we solve those individuals problem, which I think a million and a half, um, I think rough estimate uh, living in the U S and Canada, if we could uh, produce those tools for them, I think it could be actually a, a viable market. With that, with that idea, we started this movement called Iran Shah, which is an old uh, name for Iran, uh, pre-Islamic uh, Iran, but which which says ba basically like a culture, a unified culture of, of the area in general. It's not specifically modern day Iran. It, it, it is uh, bigger than that. So I like that. I like that. Yeah. It, um, so partner up with a with an Afghan national uh, who's also a Persian speaker, amazing, amazingly connected guy. And, and we're, we're working on this slowly but surely of like, how do we bring about these uh, these products to to use as tools for people to explain themselves and understand themselves. So that's that's the general gist. And and the, the work that I see you doing um, is very much falls into that category, right? Falls into that category of like, we haven't been able to tell our own story. So other people say it. I think it's time for us to start telling our own story. The talent is there. I think it's, it's just a matter of bringing those groups of talent talented artists together to kind of say the story which which i see you doing like a lot of this work not specifically around iran but i think there's some interest in you in, in that area too so that's oh yeah no definitely um uh...